And there is something about being together that I really want us to not miss. Did you know, this just comes to me, did you know that a, a lion, we consider it the king of the jungle, but, but do you know a tiger will take a lion? A tiger can whip a lion. But if you take five tigers and five lions, the lions will win every time. Because lions learn how to fight together, tigers fight alone. There's something about being together, walking it out in unity. There's something that happens that we lose when we just think individually. And we in North America are good at the individually part. But the Lord wants to help us to get the together part as well. For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all men, instructing us to deny ungodliness and worldly desires and to live sensibly, righteously, and godly in the present age, looking for the blessed hope and the appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior, Christ Jesus who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from our lawless deed and purify for himself a people for his own possession, zealous for good deeds. What God put on my heart to share briefly with you today is this thought of good deeds. But what happens often if we hear that, we immediately go into the, okay, I got to try harder mode. And that, that's not what we're talking about at all. This is not trying harder. This is not doing something to please God. This is just merely a reflection of the picture of what this life will look like when you really know who you are in him and who he is in you. See, that's the foundational basis for everything. So there's a guy named Francois Dutour. Dutour and he lives in... South Africa. He's going to be at our house, actually, in Florida in a couple of weeks. And he's done a translation called the Mirror Translation. It's a paraphrase. And I'm going to read this passage that I just read to you. I'm going to read it to you from this new paraphrase translation. Okay, so just listen. The grace of God, you can follow it if you want in Titus 2. I'm reading Titus 2, 11 to 14 from his new translation. The grace of God shines as bright as day making the salvation of humankind undeniably visible. The day and age we live in sets the stage for displaying the attraction of an awe-inspired life. Our minds are rescued in the revelation of righteousness. We are in the school of grace, instructed how to thoroughly reverse the apathy and indifference that erupts in a wave of lust that would seek to dictate the day. Everyone was welcome with open arms the outrageously blessed expectation, Jesus is what the world was waiting for. He radiates the brilliant intent of God engineered by his greatness to rescue the world in Christ Jesus. Now, verse 14. He gave himself as a sacrifice in exchange for our freedom. We are redeemed from every obligation and accusation under the law and declared absolutely innocent. He defines who we are. He defines who we are. Our brand name is I Am. We are exclusively His. We are a passionate people. We excel in doing everything we do beautifully. Isn't that good? Isn't that good? The whole translation, he calls it the mirror translation. And he translates, he, he paraphrases the word from a grace perspective, from understanding that it's not works that we have to try to do, 
but that it's what Christ has already done, recognizing who He is in us, and then out of that, living a life that will look of good deeds. Yeah? Wellsburg. We're, I say we, I feel like I'm part of you. Uh, starting a, uh, an outreach there, a, a fellowship here in a month or so, yeah? But you know that in part began with good deeds. After the tornadoes went through there, a number of you have gone over there, you worked, and you, you built a relational equity. You let your light shine to see your good works so that they may glorify the Father who is in heaven. Yeah? Isn't that true? See, it's good deeds. But we didn't do it to earn anything. We didn't do it because, okay, now, now we gotta, you know, we got to earn ourselves. No, it's already done. That's a done deal. It's just out of that should flow a life of good deeds. Yes? And so I'm excited for you in this area because there is, again, a whole new opportunity to demonstrate the goodness of Jesus to people that are hurting, that are... <clears throat> I think we've shared with you that our, one of our granddaughters, Rachel, she's nine years old. She, she doesn't have autism, but, but she has Augsburgers, we think, and which is kind of on that spectrum a little bit. But one of the main things about her life is she visits heaven almost every night. I mean, it really is amazing. She, she'll, she'll tell stories like, yeah, she said, uh, you know, there was a knock on the door. Now, she'll never say I dreamed, but it's, she dreams, but it's almost like interactive dreams. She says, there was a knock on the door, but she says, I knew it was angels because they don't knock loud like we do here on earth. And so, so I opened the door, and there were these angels, and she, I said to them, do I know you? And they said, well, you don't know our names, but you do know us because we're your grandparents' angels. But we're your angels, too. And Rachel said, I thought it worked that way. I just wasn't sure. <laughs> <laughs> Another time she said, yeah, I was in heaven, and, and I was an adult. And... There's a water slide in heaven that's like a waterfall, and the angels go down it all the time, she said. And because I, you know, I was an adult and I had responsibilities and work, she said, I would only use it on the weekends. <laughs> and the angels came to me and said, what's wrong with you? Why don't you use it more often? It's available any time. And my wife, Thelma, said, Rachel, you had that dream for us adults because we get so busy with everyday life that we miss the provisions of heaven for us. Yeah? We are created for good deeds. Just to, to have his life flow out from us, heaven's available to us. I think, I don't, I don't know when... I, t I think I told the story sometime while I was here. But I don't think it was when most of you were here, so I'm going to tell it with, with intent. Kathy Walters, I don't know if you know who she is. She's, a, she's a, a wonderful speaker, and she was in Auckland, New Zealand, and she was sharing with a group just like this, a wider auditorium. And as she was speaking, all of a sudden her friend, Ian Johnson, the pastor, fell out of his chair onto the floor. So she thought, whoa, what's going on here? Everybody else kept listening, so okay, everything's all right. She kept sharing, and pretty soon a fr another friend of hers over here, way on the other side of the room, started laughing and falling out of the chair. And then she stopped laughing, and then she started laughing again. And then she stopped laughing, and pretty soon, about 14 minutes later, they both got back in their chairs. Now, this was all happening, and, you know, everybody else, though, just kept paying attention, and... And so she finished the message, and when she was done, she walked over to Ian and said, would you mind just telling me what happened? He said, well, yeah, while you were speaking, a chariot pulled up in front of me, and I just got into the chariot, and the next thing I knew, I was in Fiji in a friend's church. 
And then this black island demon came into the building. And then I heard laughter. Now, they were so far apart that he didn't have any clue what was going on. He, you know, he was on the floor. Then I heard laughter, and this island demon just backed off. And then it came back, and I heard laughter again, and then it was gone, and then I was back here. So she went over to her friend and said, what, would you mind telling me what happened with you? She says, well, I was just sitting here, and all of a sudden I saw this black demon come in against me, and I just started laughing at it, which is a good idea because the victory's already won. So, you know, the only power they have is intimidation if we choose to believe it. So, so then it backed off, then it came back in, and I, started, I laughed again, and then it disappeared. And then I just got back in my seat. The next day, the pastor from Fiji called Ian and said, you were in church with us yesterday, weren't you? And Ian said, yes, I was. He says, well, the pastor says, well, let me tell you what happened. I was preaching, and all of a sudden, I felt this demon come in against us. And then we all heard laughter, and the demon backed off, and then it came back in, and we heard laughter again, and then it disappeared. Now, some of those people from Fiji visited the church in Auckland, New Zealand, where this laughing lady is. And when they heard her laugh, they said, we've heard that laugh before. <laughs> well, you know, when I heard that, <laughs> when, when I hear testimonies, like my daughter. It, it just opens a new paradigm for me. It just opens possibilities. Okay, that means that in a worship service like we had this morning, God could take us anywhere in the world to do something that would change and transform lives. It can happen. We read about a young man, a young man who was in his, in his house and he walked through the doorway to the bathroom. And as he walked through the doorway, he was on a path in another country. And there's a young boy standing down the path. And he walked up to him and he told him about the Lord Jesus Christ. And he prayed with him to accept Christ. And all of a sudden, the natives that were there saw him. And so they, they started coming at him with spears. And so he turned around and ran back. And he walked through the doorway and he was back in his house. But the end of the story is, 20 years later, he went to that country. And he went to that country, a 28-year-old man walked up to him and said, you were the one when I was eight years old led me to the Lord. What I'm telling you is, God is... God holds time in his hands. He is not limited by time or space. He can do anything. And we have so limited what he is able to do. But once he, the paradigm is open, so okay, so in a worship service just like today, I was laying on the floor just waiting on the Lord, and Lord, I felt he said to me, where do you want to go? I said, Lord, I want to go to Hungary. And so I just felt like he took me over the nation of Hungary, and I was just speaking to the church and to, you know, speaking into that, and I'm still looking, I'm trusting that on Christian news or somewhere, I'm going to see a result of what I believe he did by his spirit through me in that experience. When we're talking about good deeds, that's what we're talking about. Just letting him be Lord of our lives. Just letting him flow. Just letting him do what he wants to do in and through us. And not limiting him by, oh, well, I don't know. Well, that sounds weird. Yeah, okay. Let it be weird then, as long as it's him. Yes? Zealous for good deeds. There are a number of scriptures that talk about good deeds. I'll, I'll just take two, and I, I know I've tackled these with you before in other messages, but in chapter 2 of Ephesians, verse 10 says, For we are his workmanship, his poema, his poem, 
We are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for what? Good works. Created in Christ Jesus for good works, for good deeds, to do something. Created in Christ Jesus for good deeds, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. God prepared beforehand, I believe in the Greek, that's pro etoimazo, and it has the idea of that God tailor-made garments for us beforehand to fulfill specific good works that he has for us to do. Listen, that's why it's not wise for us to compare ourselves one to another. You know, we don't, many of us can't sing like Bethany sings. We, we, we don't play the, the, the keyboard like she plays. But you know what? If you don't, it's because that's not the good works that God has created for you to do. You have tailored made garments yourself, specifically made for you. Now, I, I, you might remember, but when I was in Korea, it's the only time I had a tailor made suit. My interpreter, because I, <clears throat> I just don't know Hungarian good enough. I, I've never learned churchinese in Hungarian, so I just, I just knew I couldn't do it. So, so I went to the interpreter. I said, hey, you, come and help me. I feel like I have a prophetic word for this girl. She says to me, oh, I can't do that. We don't do that here. I said, we're going to do it now. <laughs> so we get down there, and the moment I start speaking, the girl stops. I mean, I'm telling you, like the moment I start giving a word, she stops and listens. It, it was a simple word. It was probably, Jesus loves you. <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't remember now. It's been so. She stops immediately. Give her the word. She stands up, she leaves. Two days later, I saw her in another service. She comes up to me and says, I am free. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah! Yeah. He equips us. He gives us what we need to see the lost found, to see the broken mended. He does. I remember I was in Iowa. This is, again, years ago, and, uh, and I was speaking at Iowa Mennonite School uh, for the week. I was there, you know, it was the, I forget what they call it. Anyway, renewal week or something. Anyway, and, and so then during the day, they gave me an office, and students could come and talk to me, and this one young man walked in, and he said, well, you know, I, I, I really have problems. I'm demon-possessed. And he goes on, and I looked at him, and I said, you're not demon-possessed. And he goes, I'm not? I said, no, you're not. I, not that you can't be, but he wasn't. Do you understand? But the enemy caused him to believe a lie. And as long as you and I are believing things that aren't true, they affect the way we feel and how we see things. And so he was living in guilt and condemnation and, and just kind of like hopelessness. And, and I'm telling you, it was like a light went on. And you could see it. His countenance just went from to, to what? You, really? And so, you know, we were able to pray with him to see because he came to set the captive free. And he uses us. He's tailor-made garments for us, and he's equipped us to make it happen. It's used in two ways, to, to equip, to outfit. It's used to outfit a ship for a voyage. It's used to outfit an army for battle. To equip an army for the battle. To outfit... A ship for a voyage. And how, you know we're on a journey. We're all on a journey. But God's already given. That's what I'm telling you. The God of peace has given you whatever you need for your journey. For what he's called you to do. For the good works, the good deeds that he's asking you, that he's prepared before. Not to, not to earn anything. You understand? It's just... This is, this is the picture of how this life looks. <laughs> then just go do it in faith and see what God will do. Yeah? A year ago, I'll close with this thought. 
a year ago, <clears throat> I felt the Lord say to me, you need to go to Canada. There's a family in Canada, some of you know them, the Homers. The, the parents, she's, she's got cancer, and unless God touches her, probably her days are numbered. He, he thinks he's been dying for the last 10 years. Uh, when I say it that way, because he kind of believes it, I, I, on a calendar he wrote in 2004, this is the day I'm dying. So, so he's been dying for a long time. So I, I felt God say, you've got to go, and I won't say all the reasons why he said it, but it just didn't seem right. It just timing, I mean, you know. Finally, this year, I knew, okay, I need to go. So that's where I just came from. First, I was way up north in Canada, about eight hours, seven hours above Toronto, and then came back to this Hungarian church for last night and then back here. But just to see the timing of God and in things that sometimes are troubling, we couldn't get a hold of their son. Their son has been a problem to them through the years because of just a lack of communication, not because he doesn't love them. He doesn't communicate well. And he was supposed to come. He didn't come. So they asked me to go look for him. So I drove three hours to find him. Couldn't find hide nor hair of him. I knew where he lived, but he's not around. So they said, well, stay overnight. The next day, she, I'm talking to her on the phone, the, the, the wife, the Carol Homer, and she said, would you go? They wanted to move. They want to move to assisted living place. Would you just go there and talk to them for us? So I go there, I walk in, and I see the women in charge, and I say, you know what, there's this couple, they really need help. I mean, he, the husband needs help, the wife now has ovarian cancer, and it, they need help. The woman says, it's a, it's a Finnish home, she points to her desk, and, and there's a stack of paper this thick, almost an inch thick, just filled with names, each page filled with names. She says, this is the waiting list. She says, but there is a new wing being built, and if they would have assisted living, we are looking to place some people in there. I said, well, I'm telling you, they need assistance. They need assistant living. Well, if they're already in the system, we're having a meeting this afternoon about it. This afternoon about it. I, I said, well, she says, so call tomorrow and find out. Make a long story short, I called the next day, couldn't get a hold of them. They call, she called back and said, I want to talk to Lou, which made me feel good. So before he leaves, so, so I called back and she said, I just want you to know they're in. I mean, it was huge. Soon as that was settled, I found the sun. Had I found the sun the day before, I'd have never been there to go there. They may never have. All I'm telling you is God works it all out. It's good works before the foundation of the world that he's already tailor-made for us to fulfill. And by faith, we just want to walk in them. And so when it was all done, I could walk away from there. I said, okay, Lord, I, we fulfilled what you sent me here to do, and I can just leave it and rest there are other issues there, but I can rest it in his hand. The Lord has something like that for every single one of us, I'm telling you. You're already doing it. You've already been doing it. So just focus on who you are in Christ and who Christ is in you, and then just let his life flow. Is that all right? Are we good with that? And then, and then... We're going to have some gatherings where there will hardly be time to share anything of the word because you are the word of Christ. He richly dwells within you and you're going to have so many things to share of all the good things he's done through you. It was okay, yeah, okay, come, yeah, come on, come on. Oh, great. I think it's coming. I 
think he's upon us. <laughs> We've already seen it. We're going to see it more. So, Father, I thank you for my brothers and sisters. I thank you for what you're doing, the good deeds that you already, before the foundation of the world, have determined for all of us that we have the privilege of just walking in because of who you are in us and who we are in you. Thank you that you have caused your grace to appear bringing salvation to all men. And we pray for this entire city. We pray for Wellsburg. We pray for Elmira, Elmira Heights, Horseheads, the entire region. We pray for those that are in Pennsylvania, any the people that are represented here. We pray, Lord, that in our sphere of influence, that we would truly see your kingdom come and your will be done in our sphere of earth as it is in heaven. We thank you for it. May we see people delivered because you've already did it. You've already paid the price, Lord. You've already made it available for every individual, every human being. And so we commit ourselves to you in a fresh way today. Just receiving your truth, knowing that you've already finished everything we need. In Jesus' mighty name. Hi, I'm Pastor John McConnell, and I'd like to welcome you today for watching our program. It's just amazing the technology we have today that we're able to live stream all around the world. And we'd like to give you an opportunity, if you'd like to give towards this ministry, you can go online and be able to uh, follow the directions that are on there and be able to give to the ministry that you've been watching. So God bless you. We thank you for being part of Southside Alliance Church today.